Vice-Chancellor, Sheriff, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Alan Eglin Hethcote Emery was born in Manchester in August 1928, and he'll shortly say something to you about his humble background. He went to school in Manchester and obtained a school certificate, but there was no obvious means of progressing his education. He enjoyed singing, and a local choir master first suggested he apply to then Chester College to train as a teacher, and he spent what he has described as a transformative two years here in the 1940s. On leaving the college, he undertook national service as a pacifist. On being asked what he would do if the enemy were attacking him, he said he would pray for them and was promptly assigned to a tank regiment, the King's Royal Hussars, and subsequently the Education Corps. On concluding national service, he gained a place at Manchester University and began a truly remarkable career trajectory. He graduated with double first-class honours in botany and zoology, then after a period of research and teaching, returned to study medicine and graduated with first-class honours in 1960. Following junior hospital appointments, he obtained a PhD in human genetics at John Hopkins University in the States for his thesis, The Carrier in X-Linked Muscular Dystrophy, and on returning to the UK, became reader in medical genetics at Manchester University and later foundation professor of human genetics at Edinburgh University, during which period he served as the president of the Clinical Genetics Society. Subsequently, he set up the European Neuromuscular Centre in Paris, later the Netherlands, for facilitating and coordinating research into neuromuscular disorders in Europe, and from 1999 was its chief scientific advisor. In 2001, he set up the section of medical genetics at the Royal Society of Medicine and was its first president, later elected a trustee. Professor Emery is Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of both London and Edinburgh, Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, Member of the Faculty of Community Medicine, Fellow of the Linnaean Society, and Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. He has been a visiting professor at universities including the University of California, Los Angeles, Cape Town, Duke, North Carolina, Heidelberg, Hyderabad, Memorial, Newfoundland, New York, Padua, Beijing, Warsaw, Rangoon, the Royal Postgraduate Medical School, St. George's Medical School, and the Institute of Neurology, London. He has published over 400 scientific papers, mainly concerned with clinical, biochemical, and genetic research in neuromuscular disorders. He was the first to delineate the disease Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy and its protein emerin has been named after him and Emery Nelson syndrome. He has also written or edited 24 books. His first book, Elements of Medical Genetics, and now retitled in the University of California edition, Emery's Elements of Medical Genetics, is now in its 14th edition and has been translated into Italian, Greek, Spanish, Arabic, French, Chinese, and Serbo-Croat. Though first published in 1968, it was the 2008 winner of the British Medical Association Student Textbook Award for 2008. Those of you who appreciate the short lifespan of textbooks will realize what an astonishing achievement that is. He has further authored over 200 reviews of mainly, but not exclusively, scientific and medical texts published in medical, scientific, and literary journals. I can't begin to list his editorial responsibilities or his invited lectures. His many awards include, but are no means limited to, the Lifetime Achievement Award of the World Federation of Neurology and the Muscular Dystrophy Campaign of Great Britain, the Cockcroft Medal and Doubleday Awards, Manchester, the National Foundation March of Dimes Award for Research in the USA, and the International Award for Excellence in Human Genetics Education of the American Society of Human Genetics. 
Currently, he is on the advisory board of the Wolfson Center for Inherited Neuromuscular Diseases, a vice president of the Muscular Dystrophy Campaign, and an honorary fellow of Green Templeton College, Oxford University, where he continues his writing and lecturing at the age of 86. He is, of course, listed in Who's Who London, the international Who's Who, Debrett's, the Dictionary of International Biography, and Outstanding Intellectuals of the 21st Century. Since 2001, when Oxford University Press published his The Muscular Dystrophies, I notice a slight change of focus. He has published Tales from a Geneticist's Casebook and, with his wife Marsha, a three-volume series of works on medicine and art. He has also published four volumes of poetry, culminating in the second edition of his life in haiku. His other outside interests include fly fishing and painting in oils. Professor Emery is, without doubt, one of our most distinguished alumni. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of outstanding contribution to neuromuscular science and for his role as Chief Scientific Advisor for the European Neuromuscular Center, in the name of the Council and of the Senate, I present to you for admission to the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa in this university, Professor Alan Emery. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa in this university. It gives me great pleasure to invite Professor Alan Emery to address the congregation. Vice-Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, this is an incredible honour which I would never have imagined when I first came to Chester in 1945. It's also, for that reason, a very memorable occasion. As you heard, I grew up in what we euphemistically now call a rather backward environment. Well, actually, it was a very poor working-class environment in East Lancashire in a house with an outside toilet and loo and a mid-in, a metal bath on the wall in the outside uh, yard, no lights, no electricity, just gas downstairs. And my early years were most informative through my grandparents, who couldn't read and write. And somehow I got a scholarship to high school. Don't know how I got it, but I did very badly at school and I uh, got a school certificate, which I don't tell you anything about. But one of the subjects was woodwork. I don't think anybody gets that nowadays. But then, in the second or third, I went to work in a factory then. Uh, and not as a scientist, gosh, no. This was working on the floor, making vast amounts of, of these colors for commercial use. And we now know they're all carcinogenic, so I suppose I shouldn't be here now. But anyway, whatever. I was in the choir, I love singing, I love music, and my choir master, as you heard, came to see me one day and said, Alan, would you like to go to become a teacher? Well, I'd never imagined that. Nobody in my family had ever done anything like that. 
So I got an interview and I got in and my life began to change. The first, it was a hinge factor, I think we call them now, don't we? In your life when something dramatically changes. And we had a, Herbert Morell was the vice principal and he taught us how to teach. And I've never forgotten that. Don't know if I'm showing it now, ladies and gentlemen, by speaking clearly, but there we are. And how to present data and information, not only to school children, but also other groups of people. And then we also had a very good science teacher, Hooper, and he convinced me I should have a career in science. Mr. Hooper is long dead now, but he was a wonderful teacher, and I actually got a distinction. All this was a tremendous surprise to me. And the other teacher I remember very well at the time was John Bradbury, and he introduced us lectures on the literature and I fell in love with Charles Dickens, and I've loved Charles Dickens ever since. And the book he suggested at the time we studied was Pickwick Papers. And I saw it on television the other night, and it brought back so many memories, with this wonderful moral at the end. Whatever, I'm not going to go down that path. But it was wonderful being taught all these things which took me out of this environment totally. And finally, a group of us volunteered to do an an additional course in religion with the principal then who was the Reverend Canon Asprey. And this was very interesting because he showed us how religion was very wide. It should encompass everybody. Boy, how I wish we could do that nowadays. That all religions, no matter what they are, should come together and respect each other's beliefs. Well, for all these reasons then, Vice Chancellor, it gives me tremendous thrill to accept this great honour and especially, for me, a very memorable occasion. Thank you so very much, sir.